After looking at and discussing filters in the last video, it only makes sense to continue on this trend and talk about the full-blown EQ. So we're going to go back to our handy-dandy TDR Nova here and just talk a little bit about the actual bands here. So, so far we've worked with the threshold in a wide band setting and we've done some dynamics processing. We've brought in our high pass and low pass filters, which you can either consider part of the EQ or not part of the EQ. But now we're finally going to get into the meat here and talk about these different frequency bands and in this case we have a four band eq plus our two filters so you can kind of look at this as like a six band equalizer once you start to move the filters around and automate them to me it sort of becomes more of an effect like you're trying to actually hear that motion going on and that's not really eq because eq is a static process but it's up to you whether or not you want to define those as being a part of the eq or not typically i would consider this a part of the eq because because it's rare for me to have additional like changes in the EQ and then to automate the uh, low pass filter. More likely, I would use just a standard uh, additional plug-in slot if I was going to be doing any motion so as not to confuse myself with whatever process it is that I'm doing. Again, we can turn the analyzer on to out here. So it's going to actually indicate to us visually the changes that we are making. So if we're playing back this sound and I increase this band, we'll see how that band increases. You can see that like so. But one thing you will notice is that we're not seeing that band suddenly jump way above the ones around it. What's actually happening is the bands to the left and the right seem to be getting smaller. And the reason is because this EQ actually has an automatic makeup gain compensation for any EQ changes you make. Because EQ is really all about balance. It's about the tonal balance of a signal. And for a lot of people, they put an EQ on and they start increasing frequencies and it sounds a lot better because it's a lot louder. But really, that's not what EQ is about. It's about shaping the tonal quality, not making it louder or quieter. If you want to make the sound louder or quieter, you know, you just go to the output gain and you turn it up or down. So this is a great tool, especially for those of you just getting into making music and working with EQ, because you're really going to hear what you're doing to the frequencies, not what you're doing to the sound as a whole. Not much for me to explain with this EQ. It's pretty straightforward. And if you've gone through the other courses, you already know how this is working. We can choose from three different shapes and I'll turn off the filters here and we'll just work with the first band. And I can go to a low shelf, a bell, which can actually go above and below, or I can go to a high shelf here. Okay, so with these shelving filters, what you have is the ability to increase all of the frequencies to the left of whatever the cutoff is. So I've raised this up by 3.6, but when we're looking at the cutoff frequency, which is 80, it's not corresponding necessarily to 3.6 increase. And that all has to do with the Q setting here. So even though my cutoff is at 80, if I put the Q all the way to the left, it's actually still starting the increase well to the right of 80, you know, all the way up to like 450, 500, and it's a slow, gradual increase as you go to the left. If I put the cue to the extreme to the other side, actually what we're going to have is a dip right to the right of that cutoff frequency. So here at 100, you can see that we're actually losing decibels. And then right above it, we're actually getting this like kind of peak, which is right around where the cutoff frequency is. And then it actually levels out in and around like 3.6 or so gain. So this is really important to understanding how these uh, shelving filters work. Because let's say that we were going to be um, EQing a kick drum, for example. And I'm going to just bring in a new instance of the plugin. If we're working with this kick drum and we want to emphasize the fundamental frequency, so where it's really kind of booming out, let's make sure we have loop on, put it onto out. Okay, this is where the fundamental is. If I want to really emphasize that, I could go about it in actually like three different ways with what we know about this EQ. The first thing I could do is use this bell and I could go over. And if I hold down shift and command, I can actually solo out the frequency range. And then I could go over and try to find it, increase the Q. And this sounds to be about where the fundamental is. And I can even use the uh, visual representation to help me as well. Cut out of that. And then I could just gain right from this point. 
right and I can bypass and you'll hear how it's a lot lower. The other thing I could do if I want to emphasize that more is actually take away frequencies right after it. So I could go to maybe like, I don't know, 60, 70, 80, this sort of range and cut. And the third option I'd have would be to actually use this shelf and use the extreme setting here on the cue. All right, I'm going to increase gain, obviously, and bring it right in and around where that fundamental is peaking. So now I have a gain and then an immediate cut after it to even give additional space to it. So remember, you don't have to always look at these things as just black or white or there's only one solution. There's always multiple solutions and multiple ways that you can use these processors to get the sort of result that you're looking for. And again, it will all be like subtly different. So taking away versus adding versus doing this kind of extreme curvature on the shelf will give you slightly different results. And it's kind of up for you to interpret and figure out what's going to work best for the sounds you're working with. So in this particular portion here um, of the course where you're making the music, working with EQ is all about being as experimental and going as crazy with it as you want. So it's about reshaping these sounds, not necessarily about getting them to all fit nicely together at this point. When we go into the mixing portion of the class, we'll talk a lot more about EQ and different strategies and ways of kind of getting things to fit together. But for now, this is all about experimentation. So if we go into our drum beat here, solo this out we could add an EQ onto this and just go a little bit crazy with it and I'm not even really thinking so much of what do I want to do here I just want to you know have a little bit of fun and see how I can reshape this sound and remember we will have that automatic gain uh, compensation as well which is pretty cool and a handy feature so we can actually hear what's going on as compared to just it being louder or softer So let's get that pop of the snare coming out a little more. If you want, you can then compare the analyzer before and after. So this is what the analyzer was uh, looking at before we did any EQ. And here's what we have afterwards. So it's not as though I would necessarily say this is the way to go about EQing this drum loop. This is more about just being experimental and having a little bit of fun. And when you do have an idea, like let's say I really wanted to bring out the low end more and really cut off the highs, this would be the way I'd probably go about doing it. <laughs> 